My first impressions of Outliers was Gladwell is a fabulous writer. I couldn't wait to get to the next page. Malcolm is able to synthesize these things that we feel or wonder about but don't know how to articulate. He has a real greatness that people appreciate, that he can just let you learn about something through stories. Malcolm Gladwell is to writing sort of what Bill Clinton is to politics. It's the person who can take a potentially complex subject matter and start telling stories about it. And then you go, oh, I get it. Outliers comes across like a mystery because he presents you with some really interesting social phenomenon and then says, I wonder why this is. Could it be this? For me, it's a very liberating idea to know that, like, if I, that there is a road to success uh, for all of us out there. It's a little naive in the message it's sending to the general public, but it's not wrong. It's just part of the picture, but he's presenting it in a way that makes it look like it's most of the picture when it is not. Our Liars is a book about what it takes to be really, really good at something. It's about those people who have mastered their craft, gotten to the top, and why it is that they are so special. Basically, Outliers is debunking the myth of the self-made man. Superstars are superstars because they have talent and drive, but it's a whole lot more than just that. There's many variables that play into becoming an extreme success. One of them is opportunities. After reading the book, uh, I, I definitely uh, realized that I myself was an outlier. It was pretty unlikely that I would be <laughs> have any kind of success at all in the music industry. Uh, but my career started about the same time that MTV did. And they were pretty much desperate for content. So even though my first videos were very low budget, uh, they were good enough. So I got early airplay on MTV. And then, after my first album came out, Michael Jackson hit. I think one of the big lessons from the book is to look at the world as a series of opportunities. If you're given an opportunity, take the chance. The book brings up the, the story of Bill Gates, how he was given the opportunity of having a computer lab in his high school in 1968. He was one of a handful of people in the world that had that kind of opportunity. I love the Bill Gates story, but he wasn't the only person at that high school who had those opportunities. I take a look at that story and see the innate quality, the drive or purpose or tenaciousness that Bill Gates has that obviously other people in the same high school did not. I think the biggest thing in Outliers is that idea about the 10,000 hours that it takes to become a master at anything. Most people think it's really about talent. Uh, you know, you just have to be born good. But what Malcolm Gladwell was saying is, if you don't put in that hard work, you're never going to be great. For me, it might have been a 20,000 hour rule because I worked like crazy at chess. I lived it, I breathed it. I read any chess book I could possibly get my hands on. I just consumed the game. It was my passion. And I grew, particularly as a result of all that dedication, those hours I put in mastering the craft. When we started KIPP in 1994, we didn't know the research about 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. What we did know is that the only variable that we could control in our classrooms was the quality of our teaching and the amount of time we had the kids. You know, all of our kids go to school 7.25 to, to 4.30 or 5. They go home with a couple hours of homework. They come to school one to two Saturdays a month. They go to school for three or four weeks during the summer. There's just no getting around that excellence is a result of hard work. And hard work defined by both hours in a day, days in a week, weeks in a year, and years on top of years and decades and decades. Gladwell talks a lot about Erickson's study on elite musicians, and he has made a wonderful case that practice is important, and he's right, practice is important. However, practice is not the end all. You can't take someone without innate talent and practice 10,000 hours and think you're coming up with a world-class violinist. You are not. Talent blossoms in ways that you don't necessarily predict or see. There are kids who blossomed and everyone's like, oh, they have this natural talent. I'm like, well, if you knew them when they were eight, there was no way you would have seen that natural talent. They worked incredibly hard and now it seems as a natural gift. This is the old basketball quote, you know, you can't train for height, you can't train for speed. So there's certain things that are really hard to develop, but I think we overestimate what those things are. 
You can improve your own personal performance. Practice does that for you. Would it make me capable of running a six minute mile? Never. I think the thing about Malcolm Gladwell that people love about him, but some people might hate, is that he poses an idea, an intriguing idea, and then he proceeds to tell a bunch of anecdotes about it. So he's not necessarily like this hardcore, scientifically detailed wonk. He's not going to give you the deep research. He's going to write a very readable treatise on a very interesting idea. Anecdotes are just fabulous stories because they're personal and people like personal stories. However, they don't give us general trends. They give us what happened to one person in one particular moment in time, and that's dangerous. The danger that you have when people read a book like Gladwell's is that they'll think the book is gospel, and if their kid doesn't match up precisely with the findings in the book, then the kid's not going to be good, and maybe shouldn't even do the activity. I mean, somebody like my mom, she should have decided right away, based on evidence, that there's no way in the world I was gonna be a grandmaster chess player. Right. Stop him now, have him do something else. But it was my passion, my drive, my hard work that made me keep going, despite the fact that there were no chess players of any renown in my neighborhood. I still wanted to be great. If someone wants to read this pessimistically and saying, well, even if I work really hard, if the right circumstances don't coalesce, but the people who really put forth the deliberate practice, those opportunities tend to find them. There's, there's, there's very much like a, a magnetic pull between the practice and the opportunity part. People who are outliers, people who are exceptional in whatever field they're in, seek out opportunities. They know when they see an opportunity. It's much more than just, a Cinderella, I lost my shoe and the prince found me. If you read this book, you see these great people who did these great things, you should come away feeling like, you know, if I'm willing to put in the effort, I could be great at this too. I'm Weird Al Yankovic, and you're watching Thinker. To Sell as Human is about how to move people with authenticity, with passion, and with purpose. Daniel Pink breaks the book into three parts. Uh, the first part is the rebirth of a salesman. 